This is a visual record of a grain recovery operation performed on a failed steel storage structure located in Minot, North Dakota by Gregerson Salvage Incorporated. The design capacity of the bin was 750,000 bushels and was full of 62 pound per bushel spring wheat. The twin of the collapsed bin remained standing. The twin contained sunflowers that yield a low sidewall pressure, but the integrity of this structure was deemed suspect and measures were employed to reduce the risk of another collapse. The catastrophic failure impacted 15 empty C6 rail cars parked on the siding next to the elevator. The ensuing derailment disrupted rail service to other customers that shared the rail siding. This situation of course added more urgency to the salvage operation. As these photos indicate, there is an enormous amount of debris commingled with the grain generated just from the derailed cars. A portion of the debris comes from the car parts such as the springs, the trucks, and the wheels. Other debris comes in the form of ballast, ties, rails, spikes, and plates. To reiterate what this video clip entails, a bin containing approximately 900 semi-loads of wheat suddenly failed and inundated all adjacent structures and objects. The facility was crippled and rail service to this customer and others was shut down. The salvage operation started as does most of our operations and that is to make the work environment as safe as possible. In this instance it was perceived that the integrity of the standing twin was suspect. This meant that we must drain the contents to a level that would reduce the sidewall pressure, consequently reducing the risk of collapse. We employed two of our specially designed grain vacuums to draw the sunflowers from the center point under the floor of the bin. Once the intake nozzles were positioned, the operation could be run remotely away from the structure and reduce the risk of injury to any personnel. The flowers were discharged directly into the grain pit and from the pit the flowers were conveyed to a bin for storage.
transits were placed at various locations around the bin and focused on bin sheet bolts near the top of the structure. One man was tasked to monitor the bin for any indication of movement. The monitoring continued until the flowers reached a safe level. Once the sidewall pressure was relieved, the next phase of the operation was undertaken, which was to remove enough of the spilled wheat to allow cranes to reach the overhead conveyors. For this purpose, we used our front end loaders to feed one of our finishing cleaners. This cleaner removed any form of material larger and smaller than the wheat kernels. The clean grain was loaded onto company-owned trucks and sent to another facility owned by the insured. The millwrights and crane personnel worked in conjunction to safely remove any overhead hazards. Once a relatively safe work environment was achieved, recovery efforts were started simultaneously in two areas, the two grain vacs having a four-man crew each initiated removing wheat from around the inundated rail cars, while on the opposite side of the spill another of our screeners was positioned to accept grain from three front-end loaders. The vac recovery operation consisted of two of our grain vacuums discharging into a small custom-made screener. The 4 foot by 10 foot vibrating deck was equipped with a screen cloth having a 5 16 opening. This would allow the wheat to pass through and anything larger to flow off the end of the screen. The screened wheat then dropped into a 13 inch grain auger that loaded directly onto trucks. As the grain was removed, the vacuum recovery crews uncovered a spider's web which was originally the roof support structure. Although the streams of wheat being discharged into the hopper above the screen appeared to be clean material, this was not the case. The collapse popped thousands of bin sheet bolts that blended with the grain as well as other debris. As the wheat was reclaimed, parts of the superstructure and railroad debris was moved to a vacant lot across the access road. Eventually, we moved all derailed cars and wheels assemblies to this lot as well as much of the roof superstructure. The other ongoing recovery operation consisted of three three cubic yard class loaders feeding our largest high capacity screener. Essentially this screener was equipped with 5 16 inch screen cloth just as the previous viewed screen had been, but is designed to accept rapid cycling 
from front end loaders. Only one half of the screen's potential was needed to keep the 6,000 bushel per hour loadout conveyor filled to capacity. Another aspect of the salvage operation is the identification, the retrieval, and the preservation of artifacts pertinent to ongoing investigations. Not only does the salvage operation need to be expeditious, but it must be performed in such a manner as to recover all items of value, whether it be an agricultural commodity or evidence relating to the cause of failure or evidence of a crime. As the salvage operation progressed and the structure became more exposed, a faction of our crew was tasked with the handling of objects of interest. These objects were cut from the structure, subjected to a chain of custody, and transported to a secured area. This portion of the operation is equal to or more important than the actual recovery operations. The positive outcome of years of litigation can be at stake. the end of day five, both the vac operations and the loader recovery operation met and the concrete base was exposed approximately halfway around the circumference. At the beginning of day six, a large track skid steer loader was tracked up one of our portable ramps to the top of the concrete base. Here the skid steer would work pushing wheat off the base to the three loaders feeding the screen. At the end of day six, approximately half of the wheat that rested on the concrete base had been removed, screened, and hauled away. By the end of day nine, the spilled wheat had been recovered from around and under all the impacted rail cars, screened and transported off site. Also, all the wheat in the area between the bins as well as the tunnelway under the failed structure had been reclaimed. At the end of day 10, 98% of the wheat had been recovered screened, transported, and again placed on storage. The remaining wheat scattered on the ground was later recovered and processed using our portable fine cleaner and gravity destoning system. This cleaned wheat was then stored with the rest.
This operation was conducted by Gregerson Salvage Incorporated. If you have any questions or concerns, we can be reached by phone at 605-947-4888.